Okay, so the title of the exhibition is Endless Facade. It's, it doesn't come from any one particular place. It's not uplifted from any particular text or any other particular source. It's more about a sort of convergence of lots of different influences that um, are played out through the work that I make. So frequently the work I make draws upon a, a wide range of source materials, whether it's um, from film sets or actual films or architectural details and um, pieces of literature. But generally speaking, the work um, which explores ways of looking to the future and exploring ideas of sort of different utopias, things like that. In particular for this exhibition, there's, there's a few particular influences. There's um, the work of the architect Bruno Tout, who designed some incredible crystalline structures. Um, he did a book called Alpine Architecture, which proposed these amazing crystalline forms which stretched across the Alps. Um, or, or the work of you know architectural practices like Super Studio, which again proposed these kind of modular structures, which would kind of stretch towards some kind of um, infinite point. And these aren't actual buildings which were ever made. What interests me about them is the fact that they were, you know, there's a provisional quality about them. They're, um, they're, they're ideas for buildings, and as such, they can kind of carry ideas of you know. Utopian ideals more than something which has actually been made. Behind me is the beginnings of uh, work which is going to ex extend throughout the much of the gallery. It's a sort of concrete wall work. It's the first time I've done one of these, and really it was a, an opportunity to create a context in which to um, frame and um, sit other freestanding sculptural works. My initial thought was to make a series of sort of stage sets, if you like, throughout the gallery space. As that idea developed, I began to then think of actually having one continual sequence um, of which you see se several kind of fragments or sections um, which runs throughout the gallery and hopefully brings a sense of, kind of, kind of unifies much of the more, um, the far more disparate elements that and occur throughout the space, the, the other sculptural works. The exhibition brings together some new works as well as some uh, previous pieces which, when they come together, I hope will function as a, um, as a whole, you know. So even though one or two of the pieces have been shown elsewhere, I think they'll function in quite a different way to here. Um, there's a piece, for example, an aluminium screen called uh, The Future is Certain, Give Us Time to Work It Out. Again, the starting point for that related back to this kind of recurring sort of diamond motif, which you can sort of see in, in, in some of the wall work, but again, which was also inspired by drawings from uh, from Bruno Taut. Or, um, this time, it's articulated as a, as a series of repetitive um, aluminium shapes, which catch light and sort of as you move around them, the you know, the sculpture shifts from looking like a solid object to looking almost invisible. So, 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 so there's definitely a sense of people animating the space and you know, it's re very important for me that um, people can walk around the work and engage with it and in a way it's not just something that's about, you know, when we're, when we're talking about the stage set, it's not just about a, a, a set and then the audience, it's much more about a dialogue and a, a, an experience for people. So some of the works in the exhibition are, are found objects, some of them are things that I've made. I kind of quite like the idea of there being some sort of equivalence between those and I suppose by that I mean that you're not entirely sure of, always of what I've made or what I might have found. Perhaps there's clues in some of the pieces you, you, as you come close to it, it it's a bit scuffed, it's a bit mar marked, it's a bit worn, it's not pristine. Um, those are the ones I've made. No, th th those are probably the ones that I've, um, that I've found in the street somewhere around about my studio. or. Um, for me, it's quite interesting that dialogue which happens between objects which are like architectural models, kind of carriers for um, for an idea. Prototypes are, you know, they can be kind of utopian in the sense that they, that they imply something else to come, um, and they sort of stand-ins for that thing until it happens. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you have objects which have become broken or discarded, and you're not quite sure what they are. I mean. Um, the part of London that I live in seems to be littered with 
weird objects that people have left at the side of the road, and you think, what on earth is that? I mean, where, where did that come from? But I kind of like that thing that happens when something is divorced from its function, uh, or the function for which it was made, and it can become something new again, and it can kind of have a new sense of um, potential or, 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 or interest. There's a kind of a green um, form made out of two sort of conical shapes, which I found, um, and then I, you know, I've simply stuck them together to, to look like one of the objects in the King Lear um, stage production. So it's kind of like these things bounce off each other, and um, it's not about one kind of linear argument as such, it's more about, yeah, I think, as I said, a conversation between different elements and, and, and you know, happy accidents that happen. Um, you know, it, yeah, there's a whole series of, um, of pieces which are simply found objects, other ones are um, found and then um, adjusted or changed. And um, in a sense, I suppose, even, even the, the imagery I use is a bit like taking a found object and, and appropriating, appropriating that or absorbing it into the practice and allowing it to kind of do something new.